Good afternoon, Allison Skaberg. I'm back here with you again for another uh, Lunch and Learn series uh, webinar uh, as it relates to special needs and special needs planning. Today, uh, we are excited to be with uh, Texas Workforce Solutions, uh, Kristen Davis and Terry Boyce. Uh, they're going to be talking to us about their services and services uh, through um through Texas Workforce Commission, Texas Workforce Solutions, and um, things that we might need to have on our radar for our kids uh, with disabilities. So we're excited to have them here. Um, if this is your first time, we're really, really glad you're here today. Um, if you are a, a serial attender of some of our events, um, we're glad you're back. Um, we do have a, um, a YouTube channel, so all of our recordings, our past lunch and learns, um, live on our YouTube channel. So we have a series of webinars um, weekly, honestly, um, on all of all of the titles that we got, all of the things that we talk about are um, surrounding special needs, transitioning, planning for um, individuals with disabilities. So um, we'll, we hope that you'll check that out. Uh, you can listen to those at your convenience for sure. So today, uh, we can't see you and we can't hear you, but we know that you're here. Um, and so we do want to get as many questions um, as possible. You can put your questions in the chat box. Uh, today we um, are doing closed captioning because finally Consolidated Planning Group figured out how to do that. So anyway, thank you for um, uh, past attendees asking for that. Um, so you can read this transcript if we have anybody that is hearing impaired today. So we're happy about that. Um, so again, um, today's um, meeting is being recorded. So after today's meeting, you will get an email um, with everybody's contact information, a link to the webinar, and uh, a copy of the slides and the PDF. So in case you have to step away or in case you're wondering, uh, we are definitely recording all of that. So, um, okay. So having said that, I am going to turn everything over to Kristen and Terry. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Um, our families, we need this. We need help. <laughs> and um, we're, we're really glad that you guys are here. So I'm just going to turn everything over to you. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I appreciate you having us here today. And I will um, say again that I am Kristen Davis. I'm the Regional Transition Program Specialist. And I'm joined by Ms. Terry Boyce, who is a manager in Unit 5.1 out of the um, Gulf Coast region. So we're both from region five and very excited to be here. And so you will be hearing from both of us. So I will go ahead and go to our next slide. Okay, so we are talking about vocational rehabilitation, but before we get really into it, I want to speak to a little bit of confusion that we see with our agency. And that confusion is basically who are we and what's our name? So you'll hear different names. You'll hear Texas Workforce Commission. You'll hear vocational rehabilitation. You'll hear um, Texas Workforce Solutions, VR services. Any of those names are interchangeable when you're talking with us. We know you're addressing us, but I know it is kind of confusing. So I will say before, uh, maybe five or six years ago, we were known as DARS, the Department of Assistive and Rehabilitative Services. And then we merged under Texas Workforce Commission. So we are all under the umbrella of Texas Workforce Commission when you're speaking about the agency. However, our designated name from the agency is Texas Workforce Solutions, Vocational Rehabilitation Services. And just to always um, keep as a rule of thumb, no matter what our name is or who we are or what state you're in even, you can always find an agency for people with disabilities by looking up vocational rehabilitation. So that's how you can always figure out who we are, what we do, or any other state you go to if you're out of the state of Texas. If you look for vocational rehabilitation, you'll be able to find us. So that's kind of our shortened name. You can call us vocational rehabilitation. You can call us TWC, whatever works for you. But our official name is Texas Workforce Solutions VR Services. So I hope that made sense. I can try to clarify a little bit further if needed. I know it gets confusing. Um, you have different people from different parts of the agency that you speak with. We have navigators that are under the, um, the board and Workforce Solutions. So I know it, you hear about all these different entities. So if we ever need to clarify that further, 
just let us know. We're happy to do it. But we are the part of the agency that is responsible for helping adults and children with disabilities get prepared for work and find employment and maintain that integrated employment. So with that being said, I'll proceed to um, one more thing, Kristen, if I, sure. I could. Um, our offices are also moving around. Mm -hmm. So do you have we have offices that are now moving into TWC offices. So if you had a connection with an office before and you call that number and it's no longer in service, call the local TWC office and they will be able to connect you with vocational rehabilitation. Uh, please, that's very important. So if you call a number and it's disconnected, we're not gone. We're still here. We're just located in different offices. And this is happening throughout the state of Texas where we are merging into the local TWC offices. So keep that in mind. If you're looking for us, we're still here. We're available for you. Thank you. Good, great point, because I get calls like that a lot at our regional office saying I tried to call this office and they, I'm not getting an answer. So keep trying. You, We will answer you. We've just been moving around a little bit um, because of our merger. So thank you. Thank you, Terry. So what is it that we actually do? What is VR here for? Because we hear the name a lot, but sometimes people aren't really sure what it is we do. Our main goal and purpose is to help people that have disabilities, specifically Texans with disabilities, find and maintain employment. And that's integrated employment, not working under minimum wage, not working only with other people with disabilities, but working with the general population and making at least minimum wage. Um, it is important to remember we are eligibility-based and your services are based on you and your counselors um, conversations and decisions and what you plan for your um, impediments to employment. So sometimes we'll hear people say, oh, well, this counselor gave my friend's child this and our counselor gave us this. And it will be different sometimes based on what the counselor is seeing and what you all decide is needed. But it is a collaborative process, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, VR services are not emergency services. So if you need something done immediately, you may need to go to a different entity. We are here to assist with disability services, but there is a process, as with any state agency. So it, is, it may not happen within the hour or within the day. It may take a little bit as we plan for the best possible services for you. Uh, they are not time limited, but are not intended to be long term. So what that means is that we're not going to say you have to go after a year of services. It's not how we do things, but it's also not going to be for the rest of your life unless there were just very unique circumstances. So what we do is help you and train you up until you're ready to get a job. And once you get that employment and you're there for enough time where we feel comfortable and you feel comfortable, minimum 90 days, then we're going to let you fly and be free and we're going to close your case successfully. I do also want to point out, though, if we do close you successfully or unsuccessfully, you can always come back and reapply for services. So it's not that we're booting you out of services never to return. You can always come back if things change, if you get a new boss who's not as understanding, if you just want to move up again, you want to be a manager, you want to get more training so you can move up in the agency or in the, in the um, entity, you can always come back and get services. And as I stated before, um, these services are arranged by your vocational rehabilitation counselor. So if you're asking, um, where's my caseworker? Where's my um, um, point of contact? That point of contact is called a VR counselor and they are the one who will coordinate your services and it is supposed to be done with consideration to your choices. So it's not just the VR counselor telling you what you're gonna do, it is a collaboration and you will decide together what are the best um, ways to go as far as services being implemented. So that's very important to remember. You are, you are also going to have your choice considered when implementing these services. Terry, did you wanna add anything to that? Okay, so when we're talking about vocational rehabilitation services, there is an eligibility criteria. So it's not just that you kind of walk in and get the services. That's what we would love to do, but based on federal criteria and federal mandates, we do have to make sure that you meet the criteria that's needed to access these services. And the criteria is that you need to have an impairment, either physical or mental. Uh, so there is a disability present. And then the impairment also has to constitute an impediment to employment. So it's not just that someone has um, a visual impairment and needs glasses. 
like I have today. Um, if I just have my glasses already and I'm fine and I'm working, then it's not an impediment at this time. So I don't really need to go to VR because I already have addressed the impediment. Um, but if you have something that is presenting and you're, you don't have a way to address it and it is getting in the way of employment, you meet that second criteria. The third is that the VR, that you need VR services to um, help you address that impediment. Some people don't need us to, um, for example, if they are just, I'll use the glasses again, if I already have my glasses, I don't need VR to get me my glasses. So I'm good to go. I don't really need that third criterion. But if you need our help to get something that will help you work, you meet that third criterion as well. And then fourth, we have to all believe that employment can be achieved. So if, for example, someone comes in and says, hey, um, I do have an impediment to employment. Uh, I do have a disability that's present and I could use your services, but I have no intention on working ever we may need to look at a different agency. It's not a bad thing. It's just that employment's not um, in the picture for you. It's not in the, the forecast. So we need to get you to another um, agency that can help you out. And the counselors can do that as well. Kristen, um, I would just like to address that the non, um, kind of the, the non-visual impediments to employment. So, I mean, clearly mm -hmm. we, we understand when we see when we see a person is blind or we see, you know, we see other obvious handicaps, but when we're dealing with um, maybe um, autism, uh, ADHD, or some of, uh, some of the other behavioral type things going on where they're, they're can, can we address that? Cause I, I think that some of the behavioral issues um, may be affecting a lot of families or are working memory issues, things like that. Do, do they fit? Absolutely. And I'm so glad you asked that because that's some of my favorite um, areas of, uh, that's some, one of my favorite areas to be uh, involved in. I am the regional point of contact for our neurodevelopmental team that includes autism, ADHD, um, and other disabilities as well. So we are currently working very hard to make sure people know that that is what we're here for as well. So any, not only autism, ADHD, or, or intellectual disability, but also bipolar, schizophrenia, depression, um, things that you don't see, please refer them to us if people are having trouble with that and getting to work and getting that training in. That's something that we work with as well. We actually do have several caseloads that are dedicated to specialize in that as well, depending on the unit. So you can always refer those students that are having those kinds of invisible issues as we call them. And we actually have a pretty good task force. We Not only do we have me as the point of contact for the region, but each unit has specialty counselors who are dedicated to working with our students that do have neurodevelopmental um, disabilities and disabilities that you don't usually see. So please, and, and what we also say is when in doubt refer. So even if you're not sure and think the behaviors are a little bit um, severe, refer them to us and let's talk about it and see if, the, if there's something that we can provide. And then if not, we're also tasked with referring you to the right people. So even if we're not right, we can help you find the right people. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So now I'm gonna get into our, my bread and butter. I am the transition specialist. So this is my area of expertise. We, I do wanna point out, of course, that we do have an adult program that is actually the bigger program. So there's no fear of aging out of our services once they're no longer transition. We have a huge program for adults that get our um, adults with disabilities working in integrated employment as well. But for the purpose of this presentation, I'm all about transition. So that is what I'm about to uh, focus in on. So uh, what, what is transition services? Our services are here for our students that are aged 14 to 22 that are in some type of school, whether that is high school, middle school, elementary school, um, college, vocational training, any educational setting in an accredited setting is um, considered a transition student as long as they're under 22 and over and 14 and up. So these services usually tend to fall into five categories. There's a ton of services, but they, they fit into these five. So I'm gonna describe them a little bit as I go through each one, but I want you to just remember, these are set for specifically for our students with disabilities. So it's better to get in early when they're younger 
because adult services are great, but they don't necessarily access these five core services. So I, I urge you to get them in as soon as you possibly can. So the first um, category is career exploration. Again, this is something that we do, we all do with our students with disabilities all the time. And it's pretty much figuring out what you want to do. And we all know that changes a lot because they're, they're, we're still kids, right? And so we, we take this time to work with them and have them explore different career fields, have them take assessments. Um, our specific assessment that is really popular right now is our Berkman questionnaire. I love that questionnaire. I recommend it highly. Uh, it is really great with students on the spectrum, but any other students as well, it's computer-based. And when you take the assessment, it's usually two to three hours. And when you get it back, it talks not only about your interest and the best work for you, but it also talks about your flaws in the work environment. If you have a little bit of an attitude or you say things that you shouldn't say, it shows up in the assessment and it says you need to work on these things. It talks about the kind of boss you should have. It talks about the whether you're a team worker or you like to work alone. And it talks about um, great things that you contribute to the workplace. Just like it says, you may have um, a little bit of a, an issue with being too blunt, but it also says you're very, very helpful according to this assessment. So it's really, really in depth and um, gives a lot of examples, lots of clusters that you can look at and just different interest to give to the student and let them know, hey, th this is where you're excelling, this is what you like. And it also gives the counselor a chance to file that and keep that in mind when they're finding different opportunities for the student as well. So we do love career exploration. I also will say uh, with work-based learning, which is our second um, category here, this is right, right now is probably our most popular service in Region 5. Um, that is because when we're talking work-based learning, we're talking about having our students actually go into an employment situation, a temporary employment situation, and we pay them wages. Right now, we pay $10 an hour in Region 5, which is great, especially for someone just starting out, so they get to learn about work in a safe environment where we are there with them, we have coaches there with them and trainers, any questions they need, and it's only a temporary 12-week experience, and they make $10 an hour. So you can imagine how popular that type of service can be, and it is immensely popular. We've partnered with the schools to uh, provide that service within, their, within the school system where they are doing maybe community-based vocational instruction. And we come in and we supplement that and pay the wages while they're out, if maybe at a nursing home or at a grocery store. So it's grown exponentially in popularity. It's only been here in Region 5, maybe a year and a half, two years, and it's exploding. So I do always get a lot of inquiries about that, but that's our most famous um, work-based learning opportunity. Um, you may have heard of another one we have called Summer Earn and Learn. That is another example of work-based learning. So we have the SEAL program, Summer Earn and Learn, in the summer only, and that's a shorter time than the 12 weeks, but then we have the year-round paid work experience for our customers any time of the year, and it's counselor and customer-driven. You get to collaborate on where you go and where you work, um, and we assist with all the accommodations that you may need, no liability on the employer's part, so it's very popular with them as well because we take all the risk we and we pay the wages, so these are just examples, again, of work-based learning, but very popular. Um, <clears throat> we've got a couple of questions. The assessment that you were speaking about, was that the Berkman assessment? Could you yes. repeat that? Oh, okay, it was the Berkman. Yes. And then um, we've got someone that said, um, does every high school offer this temporary employment service? Seems one school said that they did not. And when, when you're saying the high school offers this, this is the Texas Workforce Solutions partnering with the local high schools. You you guys have like a, a, a person that works with each of the high schools. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you for um, asking for clarification. I know that's a lot of information. So yes, what happens is we offer the temporary work experience and then we partner with schools that are willing and able to facilitate that. Some schools don't necessarily have the manpower to, to um, offer that at, that, at this moment, we know with COVID and everything going on, but what we can do is partner with them when they are already having the students go out and we can come in and pay the wages. Of course, there's lots of um, caveats to that. The counselor has to be in agreement, the student parent has to be in agreement, the school has to be in agreement. So there's a lot of work behind the scenes on that, but the end result is that yes, we can come in and pay wages when the students are 
um, working with the school. So it's possible. It just depends on. So, but let's let's take time. this back a step. So if you mm -hmm. live in an area um, <clears throat> and that's not a service in the school, they can still sign up or connect with Workforce Solutions or Workforce Commission directly. You do not yes. have to go through your school. So if you don't have yes. it or if your child is homeschooled or there's, mm -hmm. there's a disconnect because of online learning, they can still work directly with you. Very good point. Absolutely. You would just go straight to the office. Usually we operate on the, especially with homeschool, with their assigned campus. So you'd probably get the counselor that's working with the school as well. Um, but again, our biggest paid work experiences right now are ones that are not at the school. So we are partnering with the schools here, but the biggest paid work experiences that we see are us sending the students out into the community ourselves, usually on the weekends and after school. So either way is fine. You can access that service. Um, and if you're interested, just talk with the counselor and say, hey, I heard about this service. Is this something we can do? And the counselor will collaborate you collaborate with you on that. And sometimes our students may not quite be ready. We may need to train them up a little bit. That's fine too. Um, but just starting with talking with your counselor, that's gonna be the starting point. Just, I'm interested in this, what can we do? Okay, and then someone um, said, and and maybe um, maybe Terry, you can put this in there. They want um, they they wanted to know about um, region thirteen or maybe Austin, Austin and surrounding area. They thought it was maybe region um, thirteen. If you knew of a person in charge for that area, so that was yes. one thing. And so if you've got that, you could put that in the chat box. Okay. And then there was an, another question that says, um, could you name that year round program again? I, we heard the summer earn and learn, mm -hmm. um, but they want to know what the name is of that year round program. Absolutely. It is year round paid work experience. That is well, that's easy enough. Yeah, year-round paid work experience. Um, I do also want to point out, again, I know this is a transition presentation, but this same service is available for adults. So if we've got people aging out, not to worry. You can also access that. And I think as adults, you actually get paid a little bit more. So it's um, it's accessible okay. to anyone who wants to participate. Okay, a um, couple more questions if you're okay <laughs> with that. Um, does work-based learning include volunteer opportunities for a child to explore possible interests that they may not be ready to commit to as a paid position? Absolutely, it does, and it, it can, and it does. We do have general work um, experience as well that's not paid if for some reason there was an issue with volunteering organizations saying we don't want people paid for that. So either way, we can still sponsor it, but um, you can get paid for a volunteer opportunity, but again, just talk with your counselor about what's happening, um, and they will be the ones to kind of help facilitate that. But right now, I believe we're in talks with a couple of animal shelters that do volunteer work, and we're working with them now to kind of establish a paid opportunity. So that happens a lot. That's awesome. So, so that was another thing. So basically, you guys do work with a lot of employers all across the mm -hmm. state of Texas. Yes. And and have their jobs and postings and things like that. So not only are you guys able to do the assessments to find out what the impediments to employment are and to help them with the training or closing those impediments, right? And kind of, you know, kind of getting them up to speed, but you guys are also able to connect them with that employer. So it's not just the training, it's the actual yes. job itself. That's awesome. Yes, we do. And we have staff dedicated to actually, um, we call them business relations consultants. Um, they are tasked with finding um, employment opportunities for all of our customers. Sometimes they will tailor some specifically for our, um, our students, specifically right now with the animal shelters. That's an example of that. But they are out there finding not only the paid work experience um, opportunities, but also actual integrated employment opportunities that are permanent. So we do have access to that. We have another question. I'm sorry, it took me a moment to, to get the, uh, the initials, but I got it. Um, how are the work-based learning sites picked? That's a great question. I don't think we've ever had that question before. So they're picked different ways. We have, again, our BRCs that are dedicated to this. They help find um, just general opportunities and then we may offer them out to the different areas and units and it's first come first serve. But also what I love about paid work experience is that it doesn't have to be that way. You as the parent or the customer can say, hey, 
my, my um, child really enjoys going to CVS and I think they could learn how to work there and we would help you develop that site. It's very simple for them. We actually do that all the time where someone picks a site and says, I really wanna to try to work here. We go in and say, hey, here's one sheet of paper that you have to sign and just put what their duties are gonna be. And that's all we need from the employer. So of course they, lo they love that, they jump on it. So we've had a lot of success just going in based off of what the student wants to do and developing the site right there. It takes It's very quick turnaround um, and it's, what the student loves is that they pick their own opportunity. Same, we've had that with um, vet, veterinarian offices. Um, we've done that with gyms, um, restaurants, you name it. So we, we can tailor yeah, that. Hotels right now as well. Yes, yes. So you name it. We'll, we'll That's get exciting. It. That, so you can really find a good environment for, for the individual that might, you know, some environments, like we, we learned um, with one of my kids that some environments weren't good. You know, mm -hmm. if you've got, you know, anxiety or other, you know, things like that, like some of those fast paced environments, or it's just chaos all the time might, might not be a good environment. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that the environment definitely matters and that's exciting. So we had one other um, thing in the chat box um, for now, and they were just <clears throat> basically asking, you know, what are the expectations for the turnaround time and, and partnering with your organization and, hearing back from somebody, getting testing, getting placed, um, because their experience has been rather slow. And so they want to know what they should expect um, going forward or, or what to do. Okay, so I am not going to steal Terry Thunder. She, she, no, go ahead. <laughs> she, she'll talk about this a little bit more as well. But um, the turnaround time varies. Uh, you should, if you have started the process and reached out and said, I need services, I'm interested in services, then you should hear back before two weeks. You should. If you don't, it happens. Sometimes there's people are out on vacation, stuff has happened that we don't know about. But if you don't hear back, then please, please, please reach out to me. I believe my email is here, but I'll put it in the chat as well. If you're not hearing back, reach out to Terry. If you're not hearing back, we can get you um, back on track because sometimes stuff just gets lost in the fray or it's assigned and then no one knew it was assigned or something happened. So just reach out again to the next person up if you're not hearing back. From yes, and, and part of that is, I mean, this is a, a challenge for everybody because we are in the offices, but a large majority of our team is working from home. We try to provide those services to you as fast as possible. But as you know, that we have had some uh, technical challenges and the team working from home. But we want to, as soon as possible, uh, get to you because it's very important that customer services is valuable and we want to do the best job that we can. So we want to do is really ask you to continue to reach out to our team and reach to the next level supervisor if you're not getting the results that you uh, need or think you should have. I can also put my uh, name and number in the chat. If you I feel free to please reach out to me uh, I'm so excited about our program and I'm eager to get the services that we have to you because they're so valuable and they really do make a difference. You're muted, Allison. <laughs> okay. I'll keep, I'm good to keep um, okay. So um, thank you, Terry. I, I um, ditto everything she just said. That's what we, we really want to make sure our customer service is on point. So if it's not happening, let us know. Also, I will quickly go through these last three of our five categories. Counseling on post-secondary opportunity. What does that look like? It pretty much just looks like um, going on college tours, talking to you about what is needed when you go to college. That whole realization of you don't get an IEP in college. How do you go about getting your accommodations? Those kinds of things, talking to you about, okay, you wanna be an engineer. What kind of classes would you be taking? What kind of school is best for engineering? Those kinds of things. So that's what it looks like when we're talking post-secondary. 
think job readiness, this is one of the oldest things that VR has, has always done, whether it's with adults or students, and that's training you for the job you want. So that's learning soft skills, that's learning about how to talk to your employer, learning about just simply saying, you can't go to the restroom right now, you have to wait until you're on your break, make sure you pace that in time where you, you use the bathroom before you go to work and then wait until your lunch break. Those Literally those little things that were just teaching the customer about when you're getting into work, workplace socialization, uh, and just learning disability disclosure, how to ask for certain things. All of that falls in the job readiness. We do tend to use providers often for this type of service. Um, and we've had it where they can train virtually. So that is available if people can't drive to where the trainer is. We've had it in person. It's still in person now if needed and it's socially distanced. Um, for, because of COVID, they can actually come into the schools and train if they want to make it a class thing, that's possible. And sometimes they actually have the class train virtually altogether, the teachers there. So it makes a lot of sense. They're there to kind of assist if they're or anything. So we can do this almost any kind of way, um, but we do have providers that we tend to use for this service. But that is something that we, especially in transition, we truly believe in training the students up. That's where our focus is mostly in this phase when they're transition. Um, as a, after they are aged out and they're adults, we tend to focus a little bit more with the employment, but you can still actually get training at that age as well. So keep that in mind. And then last is self-advocacy. And this one, we also tend to have providers work a lot with our students here, but we can do the training as well as counselors and just do a counseling session on it. So self-advocacy is asking again for those accommodations, those modifications that you may need. Talking about social security is big in self-advocacy. How much money can you get before you, you know that it's affecting your social security check? We may refer you to um, specialists outside of our agency or to our CWIC connections to talk more about social security. And this is just generally teaching the student how to care for themselves in that environment as they go into work and become more independent. So this is also another popular um, category that we have. Any more Any questions more about the, the core five and the services? Can you hear me okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm um, just so you guys know, I'm having technical difficulties. I can't read the chat box. Um, so. Um, we do have some questions in the chat box right now. So if you wanted to read them out to Kristen, then you could do that. Um, sorry about that. So I don't think we're going to dump or anything, but I'm, I might not be able to talk or I'm, you might not be able to see me. Sorry about that. Not a problem. I have it pulled up and I see one specific issue that we have here. And I think between Terry and I, we can, we can address that. So that and then the only other yeah. thing I see now is how do we request those self-advocacy services and then I see what is the list of those services so um I'm going to get a little bit of clarification there do you mean the list of self-advocacy services or just the core five in general and then while we, while I'm waiting on that answer yeah, okay so how do we request the self-advocacy services when you're talking to a counselor, there should we have not only do we have the brochures that just talk about transition, but we also have handouts that talk specifically about the core five. But all that you have to say is, I'm interested in the self advocacy pre ETS service, and then kind of talk to the counselor about what's available. Sometimes we have, and I'll get into this later, we have counselors that are not only working with students and they're just not as familiar. And if that's the case, they can um, talk with us a little bit more about what's available because you have to go in and look for the provider that actually can give those services. So it takes a little bit longer and just locating the person and making sure they're virtual or they're in the area if you want it in person. But you can just say, I'm interested in pre-ETS services and specifically the self-advocacy category. And then we go from there. I hope that answers. As far as a list of the services, um, we don't have a specific list of self-advocacy. What we do have is the provider and the providers that provide the self-advocacy training and based off of their curriculum, we can give you that information. You can kind of decide if this is a good fit or not. Hope that answered that. Still waiting. Okay. So it sounds like, and I haven't gotten a chance to put my information in here, but it sounds like that's another um, issue that we may have to address just 
offline if you're already um, asking and you haven't heard back yet. So again, you're doing the right thing. Talk to us if you're not getting yes. a response and we can, we can assist with that. So I'll go to the next slide here. There we go. Okay, so, and this is, we, we walked right into it. I just spoke about this, but are, what are the different kinds of counselors? So the counselors that are only assigned to work with schools and students are called transition vocational rehabilitation counselors. They only work with students. Um, they're generally mobile, even before COVID. They're usually not in the office as much because they're always at the schools. The vocational rehabilitation counselors are actually with general adults usually. And sometimes we give them high school assignments because we have, last I checked, we had over 600 high schools in Houston proper, and we have only 30 TVRCs. So that is not enough. And because of that, we have a lot of general counselors who also come in and help with that. Um, I don't want you to think that they are not as good of a counselor. They are, they're excellent. They just don't generally work with as many students. So there should be no interruption in services. And that's important to remember if a v, if you do have a VRC, they are not supposed to have, lack any services. You're still gonna get the full transition experience. And if you're not, please let me know. We will, um, we will address that as well. And I see, I'm looking at the chat too. I know Terry probably got it pulled up as well, but um, is, a counselor specific, is there a counselor specifically for ASD students? So I will say we do have some counselors that specialize in that. Some units have almost all of their counselors um, specializing in ASD, and then some may have one or two, but most of the transition counselors and counselors assigned to the schools have received specialty training in ASD, but you can always request that as well. If you just want to say, I'm very comfortable with someone who works with ASD and is familiar with the interventions that they have for that particular population, you can always talk to a manager and ask them about that. And if possible, we will try to get you with someone who has that experience. I can't say it's always possible, but mm -hmm. it's it's possible. So always ask. And yes, our counselors can come on the campuses now, uh, as long as they're following all of the safety precautions and that we have in place. Yes, they can. Yes. yes. Okay. I don't see anything else, so I'm going to proceed. Um, this is uh, just a quick info about um, our Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act. Basically, this was created because we didn't have enough transition services in this country for students with disabilities. They were mostly geared towards adults. So that's where those four or five come from, that we owe act. That's where we got all this extra money that we wanna spend on these students. Um, and that's where we got all these extra services. So that's why you're seeing a huge push for transition right now because we got granted a lot of money to make sure that these students no longer fall in between the cracks. Okay, I see a question. I probably missed this earlier. Um, it, was a specific, it was probably earlier when before I got to get look at the chat um, about someone may maybe being too severe for services. I won't read the entire thing aloud, but um, someone having intellectual disabilities um, that put him at early elementary level, would he be precluded from participating on that fourth criterion, basically being disabled? So the question is possibly, um, we don't know that. We always say when in doubt, refer, because we would mm -hmm. never one's too severe until we actually try to put them through the interventions that we have and the um, accommodations that we have. So what usually happens is someone applies for services and then we um, do all of the evaluations, assessments, we put them in work experiences if we can. And then if they're still not able to do it after the training, after simulating work, then we'll have the conversation of, okay, this person may be too severe, but we don't just automatically say they're too severe. If a counselor does tell you that they're too severe before you apply, let us know. Um, we're not technically supposed to do that. Um, it's happened, but we're we want to try first and see if you actually are able to, um, to uh, benefit from those services. And like Terry said, please refer your son. <laughs> please do. Uh, we'd rather work with you and then if it doesn't work then we've helped find something that does work but we never want to say they're too before 
we actually work with them. Okay, I'm also reading that the slide is too small. I am not sure. Oh, okay, I can fix it. Okay. I hope that's a little better. And I see another question. They're asking for a list of pre-ed training for students to take. So there, we, there are lists of that. We do have lots of flyers. I am not sure. The I guess we could email them out to Allison, the ones mm -hmm. and then if, it, if, if Allison, if you have a list of who signed up for the training, we could send it that way. That is another way that you can um, interact with your counselor. If you happen to run across a flyer of a pre-ETS activity, because they're out there, they do advertise. You can always take that flyer to the counselor and say, hey, this is really great. Do you think we could possibly do this? Because they're very good about saying, make sure you sign up with your VR counselor. So that's kind of the, the way to, to get started, signing up with the counselor saying, I really wanna try this, um, this particular mm -hmm. training. Okay. Um, if you don't hear anything about uh, from your school in the schools, so you may have to advocate to, to get us to come to your school and to find, to dig into those opportunities because those opportunities are there. Um, it's just a matter of really accessing them. You just yeah. have to ask and inquire. Yes, yes, like absolutely. Um, most of the time when people say I'm interested in this kind of thing, you've got some type of training for it, or we can create one because we have been known to create trainings based on the needs of who we're talking to. So this is a little bit more of information on WIOA. Again, uh, you'll hear us talk a lot about that money that we have. It's a lot of money and it's only for our students with disabilities. So we are very anxious <coughs> to spend that money in a good way and make sure that all of these students are covered when we can access them. We really want to make sure we get these services to these students. It's here for them. We wanna make sure that they have it. Okay. And let's see, I don't see any additional. Oh, I think I might see it. Um, if the slide is really small, maybe what you wanna do is you wanna maybe take two fingers on your mouse pad and, and spread your fingers apart and your screen, the words uh, will get bigger. So you may want to try that on your screen. Allison, I see you up, I believe. I didn't know if that was a technical difficulty or. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on. I actually can't see anything at all. I can hear you. And um, oh. and I I have um, like zero ability on any of the controls. So and if I hit end, it's going to just shut the whole meeting down. So I was just going to just stay the the way it is. I'm not really sure what has happened, and I and I and I seem to not be able to fix it. I've actually never had this happen, and we do all these webinars all the time. So I apologize for that. If you want to stop your share and then try to share again. Do you want to try try that to see if it comes up fully that way? Yeah, let's see if we can. And I'm wondering, because today was the first time we ever tried the closed captioning. Okay, that, that looks good. I'm actually seeing that now. And you can start it from the beginning, I guess, and then it'll, it'll be big. Here we go. Yeah, okay, that, that, that's better. I, I'm still having issues, but I, I can actually fully see the slides now. So sorry, sorry guys for the, for the issue today. Okay, so I'm hoping everyone can see it now, but I'll try to be as descriptive as possible. Um, I am gonna talk briefly about potentially eligible. So this, we, we've been talking about the Criterion and VR services, but I have really great news for everyone. Um, sometimes that doesn't necessarily apply. And that's when we're talking about our potentially eligible phase of VR. What this is, is a phase that is dedicated only to our students with disabilities. And it says they, they may be eligible for VR in the future. So we get a referral for a student. And what we do when we put them in that phase is say, they're not in VR services yet, but they could be. So they're potential customers, they're, they're potential. And we're trying to kind of reel you in, right? And let you see all these great services. So those core five services that I discussed prior are all available to people in the 
space. What's not available are those traditional VR services, that actual permanent job placement, assistance with college tuition. Those things require you to actually apply for full VR services, but the training, the temporary work experiences, self-advocacy talks, um, the Berkman, all that career exploration, all of those can be accessed when you are in the potentially eligible phase and you don't, you are not subject to that um, eligibility criteria that I described earlier. For this phase, all you need to do is be a student with a disability and you need to be in an educational setting. So if you're in high school and you're 14 and we know that there's a disability present, you can come in and be placed and potentially eligible and receive access to those services. Now, of course, it's not meant to go around the VR process. We always want you to end up being customers, but this is really great for people who, like we said earlier, we're not really sure if that's gonna be a fit or not. So this is where you get to come in and say, let's try it out, let's see how it works. And then if it doesn't work, um, no harm, no foul on either end. It doesn't affect our numbers and it doesn't affect um, the students, um, what their information in the system, and we can make sure to refer them to the proper channels if it doesn't work. If it does, we can move you into VR when you're ready and continue to get services and eventually place you in employment and close you successfully. So it's a win-win on both sides. Again, services to the population are only pre ed So those five core services, nothing else. No um, transportation, no um, clothing, maintenance, things like that. You can't provide that if they're in this phase. So that's the only downside. Any questions on that? That's, that, um, that's a lot of information. I don't, I don't see any questions. I don't know if um, Terry. Okay, region three contact. Um, I was saying to go to start my VR and put in the information. Uh, let me, I will look for a contact uh, real quick and listen. So if we're, yeah, we're talking region 13 or is it for the ESA? Okay. Or for us, because I know I know specifically my counterpart in region. Okay, well maybe yeah, maybe that will help. Okay, her name I'll type it in the chat. Her name is Erlinda Rodriguez. She is she is the me in Austin, so she is not in the field, but she has access to all of the um, the uh, customers and the counselors in the region, so she can get you to the right person. She's awesome as well. Um, and her email looks just like ours. When I, I'm going to put that in here as well when I get a chance. But that is her actual name. So that's who you're looking for. So if there's no other questions about potential, I'll continue. OK, so how to get started. Um, this is the question I get the most of. There's so many ways now. We have not updated this slide to um, discuss Start My VR, but that is a brand new service as well where you can just, you can actually Google Start My VR and the page will pop up. And there's also a QR code sometimes that you can use, but you can put your, your information there and it's supposed to be forwarded to the proper office uh, and a counselor should contact you. Again, if they're not, that's why we have our information in here, just let us know. Um, but other ways that you can access it are by going onto our actual website. So here you see it's texasworkforce.org slash offices slash VR general services. Um, you can also call the number in Austin. Uh, and that is also, it also pops up with Google, but it's also on this slide as well. So I'll try to get to that. Um, but you can call the number in Austin, the rapid engagement team, they'll get you back to us. Um, if it's transition, uh, it's probably a little bit easier um, to just call me or email me and I can get you to the right office just because I keep a list of who um, is at what school and all that. Whereas in Austin, they'll, they'll get you to the right office, but it, it just may take a little bit longer because it's going all the way to the top at the state office. But feel free to do either way. As long as you're interacting with one of us, we can get you to the right person. And again, if they're not contacting you, let us know so we can um, expedite that process. And there's my number, but while that's there, you can, you can actually see the, um, this is a little bit older of a slide, I do apologize, but that is the number for the Central Texas um, Austin area specialist. Her names are Linda, they already filled the vacancy, but it's just a little bit older. So you can see your number there. And you can also see mine on region five. And then if you had any other counterparts or anyone that you were wondering about other areas, that's their numbers as well. But before I continue, I will um, turn it over to Terry 
who is our, um, one of our managers and let her speak a little bit more about um, our services. I just well, wanted to say, um, I, so you guys will send us those, um, whatever flyer, whatever uh, attachments you were men mentioning. So if you'll send those to us, we will include that in today's uh, email that we send out with the recording and with, with the slides. So if you'll send those um, to myself and Meredith, that would be perfect. Great, great. Okay, we'll do that. So I just want to say that, please, it's so important that we need uh, the 504 kids. We need everyone to really participate in our services. We also pay for college tuition, okay? There is no reason for any of the parents to be in debt with college tuition because we pay for college tuition. And maybe some of you are thinking, well, maybe, um, you know, my kid is not ready for college, but that's okay. There are all these other programs, especially design. There's a STRIVE program, PATH program, um, Saint University of St. Thomas has a new program where you can get a associate's degree for pragmatic studies and associate's degree. And it's designed for students with disabilities. Please talk to your uh, counselors about these programs. These programs are outstanding. Just this morning, HCC contacted me. They have like six or seven different programs, all designed to help our students. So please, please give us a chance to work with your students. I have money available. We are willing to really work with you and give us the opportunity, give us a chance. It might've been a time where maybe the counselor didn't return a phone call, please. Please call us, give us another opportunity. Please call me, I've left my information in the chat. 713-449-6185. Uh, uh, we are here for you. Customer service is really important for us. Uh, please give us a call, give us an opportunity to make a difference. We wanna make a difference in the community. We wanna make a difference for your students and we are here to help. And I'm just excited about the opportunity. Uh, if your school isn't talking about us, tell me who the school is. We'll go to the school, make sure that they have the information, make sure that they're engaged. Because some of the schools don't understand how important we are and what role that we play. Uh, and the money that we have that can support a student and work, work experience, all these different opportunities. We just really are excited about those opportunities. We wanna to get to know you. We want to be there for you. Um, and that's pretty much all I have. I'm just super excited about transition program. And I have a lot of money to spend and I wanna spend it this year. Um, I will tell you- Well, I the truth, and the truth is you guys need to spend it because it's like, you know, um, you guys get the funding, and if you don't spend it, you're going to get get less. And I I would just like to thank you for saying the things that you did because you know we do come across families um, that say you know I called and nobody called me back, or my my counselor quit, or my counselor said he didn't qualify, or just you know said no before even taking any you know you know application or anything. So. Um, so if that is you, um, if you didn't hear anything else from today's webinar, be encouraged and do reach back out. Um, you know, the agency is aware of those issues around the state. If it happened to you, you're not alone, but they have um, really taken corrective action to fix this. Um, and so just don't let your past bad experience um, kind of dictate that you, you're not going to move forward with them in the future, because I, I really think that it could really help. Um, help your child on their path, um, on their path forward. So um, thanks for saying that for sure. Okay, there we go. And I'm also seeing, um, I'm also seeing some comments here about the online start for Start My VR and the online process. And I'm hearing, I'm seeing that there's good feedback. So that's really good because we really want that to work. 
that's a way where you don't have to try to chase someone down to get an answer. You can go ahead and just put your information in there. So I'm here, she said it's user-friendly. So thank you for that. That's what we want. And then one of our outstanding VRCs, our TVRCs are in the comments kind of giving you guys extras about what we actually do. She's naming off some programs. Hey, Monica, she is an outstanding counselor. Um, yeah. Anything. So yes, she's, she's in my unit. unit. She is. She's in Terry's unit, five one. So she's in the south. Sorry for everyone in central, but we've got mm -hmm. some amazing there as well, um, as well as north everywhere. We've got some great counselors, but she's putting in different um, disability specific programs in this state that we do help with. So even if it's like maybe you're not going to um, U of H, maybe these other programs are a better fit because they do cater to the disability. And again, we do pay for that. So you can you can talk with us about getting into these programs as well. And I did see another comment about, um, about um, having, so let me go back to it, about, um, where is it? I've lost it, but we did have another comment. I'm trying to find it. I lost it, but there was one asking about, oh, there it is, about someone who's already gotten into college and they need resources. That's why we're here too. We do help yes. the customer kind of adjust to that. We do provide assistance with tuition and books as well. Um, there, of course, there's policy there and things that criteria that has to be met, but we do assist with that tuition, room, board, and books. And we, we've also been tasked with that by the state recently, making sure that our customers are enrolling in post-secondary. So that's a goal of ours right now. So definitely talk with us about that. I am seeing a few more. Um, I have 50 computers, 50 <laughs> in my closet Yes, right now. I also have 50 iPads for you to use. So you don't have to worry about getting the computer. I already have the equipment. All the other managers have the equipment as well. We have, it. We have iPads that are yes. uh, they're getting dusty. Computers. <laughs> uh, Terry, how can they get a computer for their child? That's the question. How they can have they to. We have to be participating in the pre-ed services. Mm -hmm. That is, I'm willing to to do that. They're getting dusty. They're there. They're for you. Well, when you say pre-ed, um, does VR? In, are you including VR? So the pre-employment pre services. Um, are, is, is that VR included in that? Yes, uh, VR, if you're in mm -hmm. VR, qualify for pre-eds, that's fine. You can receive both of those um, types of services concurrently. If you are in potential, yes. you can only receive pre-eds, but you're still eligible to get a laptop to help participate in those services. Yes, five or, 504 students are able to apply for VR services, yes. And I encourage them to apply. We are paying for their whole college tuition. Please have them apply, please. For sure, for sure. Um, so if you'll uh, advance the slides, we'll um, wrap up. We've just got about two minutes left. Um, and I, yeah, I'm still seeing your slide on my end. There we go. Um, so just from a planning perspective, um, Consolidate a Planning Group, uh, we're going to help you develop those lifetime protection plans, uh, lifetime care, developing those future care cost um, estimates if we have kids that may need care the rest of our lives. Some of our kids, we don't know. We plan for the worst and we hope for the best. Some of our kids, we know for sure they're going to have some type of care needs for the rest of uh, their life, we can help you determine those costs and what that looks like. We can help with transition planning. We do ABLE accounts. Um, we do a lot of advocacy and, uh, and consulting work. Next slide, please. And so um, for these and, and for those that have attended before, we always have this kind of last slide, the things that should be on your special needs planning radar from, um, you know, as uh, if you have kids that are transitioning, um, you have kids that are in high school, some of these things need to be on your list for, for future planning considerations. We do have webinars on every single one of these topics. So again, you can um, attend future webinars and we'll um, address them again. And then we also have these out on our YouTube channel as well. Next slide, please. Okay, this is just our team. I um, I just always like to take a moment to just say, you know, we want you to meet our team and 
um, and see the other members of the team. I often do uh, the webinars and we have Michelle that does some as well, but I just wanted you to meet our team. And our next slide is on just our contact information and how you can reach out uh, directly to us. Um, and we are always happy to learn a little bit more about your unique situation with your loved one kind of partner with you on where you are in the planning process. So I would just like to say uh, thank you so much uh, to both of you for being um, being here today. And thank you for um, to, to each and every one of you that was here today. Uh, this journey is um, not always easy. Um, these webinars are really designed to give you some tools and resources and knowledge uh, to maybe make the journey a little bit easier as, as you go along. But I, for one, am very, very thankful to um, have learned about this resource. And I am also thankful that you guys have funding. I mean, how many of the Texas programs don't have funding? So this is one mm -hmm. that we can smile about and be happy about that you guys actually do have funding and you can, you know, you know, support, you know, the masses that, that need these services. So I'm, I'm really thankful for that as well. But thank you, ladies. Thank, thanks, everyone, for being here. And um, we'll get this um, recording out to you later today or tomorrow. And um, Kristen, if you'll send me your um, PDFs that you mentioned, we'll get those uh, out in that email as well. Yes. Thank you so much Great. for having us. Thank you so much. Yes, thanks so me. much. Please call us. Please call us. Thank you. Oh, she was asking for my email here. What's my email? 